Five biggest software as a service trends in 2022. Software as a service has really taken over the software world in the last decade or so. In this video, I'm gonna break down five of the biggest trends in 2022 and what you can do as a SaaS company to try and hop on some of these bandwagons to make sure you get the best out of your SaaS product. I'm Matt Grace, Managing Director of Flying Donkey. Let's get into it. All right, as I'm sure as you know, if you're watching this video, software as a service has become a stalwart in the industry. Over 70% of businesses use one or more SaaS products in their day-to-day -day operation of their business. And I believe this is gonna trend closer towards 90 to 100% as more and more on-premise software becomes less maintainable and features of compliance are gonna to have to move to the cloud to be maintained into the future. Keeping this in mind, let's look at five trends for 2022 that you should really take on board and try to incorporate into your SaaS product to make sure you're hitting the mark with your clients. All right, first up, artificial intelligence. This isn't a new one and it's been around for quite a while now, but artificial intelligence is making more and more headwinds into the SaaS area. Artificial intelligence is obviously the use of algorithms and deep learning to be able to extract information from data that's otherwise impossible to do. Artificial intelligence is growing and the technology is always evolving, but it's now becoming more mainstream and many features and functionalities are being solved by AI. Let's look at a couple of examples. AI chatbots. AI chatbots are one of the most common things you'll see on most websites these days and it's only gonna ever grow as we keep going. The old days of simple FAQs have gone by the wayside, and the AI chatbots are able to answer more complex and challenging questions that users are always asking. At the same time, these bots are trying to learn from the questions and answers, and always trying to improve their knowledge base as you go forward. By learning from this data, the AI chatbots are able to give better service and more functionality to the user, and enable them to get more out of your SaaS product. I'd highly recommend that you have an AI chatbot in your software, to enable that first line of support before moving on to a human support technician. Predictive analysis and graphing. AI is also really good around predicting and using large sets of data to predict and analyze trends in the future. As more and more SaaS products over time have gathered more and more data, they're now turning to AI to try and get some actionable insights from this data. Some of the products I've talked to in this space recently are particularly around the construction sector. Their construction and construction management platforms, and what they do is enable people to project manage construction which is pretty standard project management software that's been around for a while. But the AI element that they're able to bring into the room is to be able to help predict potential overruns, cost overruns, clashes, or other things in the project management space that a human is not normally gonna be able to predict. This is based on looking at previous projects and seeing where they failed or went around budget. These predictive models are getting more and more accurate and they're being used by some of the largest commercial dealers in Australia. With these models, some of these builders are able to save up to 20 to 30% because when you hit a cost overrun, potentially for a missing part, missing feature or missing supplies, these can have very big knock-on effects onto the project. Using AI on this data can really help solve this problem. And it's really key that you have this feature in your software because in the next few years, this may become more commonplace. The one caveat I will have around AI is it's not a silver bullet to solve everything in your software. While it is a big trend, it's key to keep in mind that for example, in those construction pieces of software, the AI sits as a smaller, more value added service on the back end of the software. Front part of the software is still maintained and managed in the same way and still has functionalities and features that any other software application would have. AI just becomes the cherry on top to really give that feature that people want and that value add that they're really looking for in the SaaS product. AI is a trend that's been trending over the last few years, but it's really starting to hit the mainstream now and I see that continuing in 2022. All right, the second trend I see in 2022 is more vertically integrated SaaS products. If you look back at what started in the SaaS revolution, we had these very small micro SaaS products. What they did is they did one thing really well and that's all they did. And then what happened is more and more people had to buy more and more different SaaS products and try and bring them together themselves. These integrations started becoming more complex and from an end user's perspective, what they wanted was an end-to-end -end workflow that took over all of their business. This is where vertical SaaS has come into it. Now there's numerous drivers to why vertical SaaS is becoming more popular, both from the perspective of those micro SaaSs being harder to integrate, but also from larger corporations acquiring and integrating more features into their own SaaS product. Let's have a look at a few features here. Number one is that they're highly integratable. Obviously, because you've got the integrations within the SaaS product, you don't have to do them between multiple other products. This is what's really one of the biggest key drivers for vertical SaaS integration. If you don't have to take the data from one SaaS product and put it into another, it makes it far easier for the end user to use and understand. Secondly, auto scaling and upgrades. If all your products are in the one space, it means they upgrade and work seamlessly in one package. So rather than the customer having multiple end SaaS products, if you have a simple, single, vertically integrated SaaS product with more features in a single set, it means that they can get all their upgrades and maintenance in one spot. 
Vertical SaaS is really gonna be a trend, I think, in 2022, and it has started happening in the last couple of years. One caveat I will put around Vertical SaaS is that you can't make your SaaS product be one to everything. And that means you have to reach a point where the features you're doing must still stay within your niche. While it's always good to continually add features and try and integrate vertically as much as you can, simply adding feature after feature and making your software unwieldy is gonna start alienating other users. It's a fine line to tread between being vertically integrated and also addressing the niche market that you went after in the first place. I still think that we're gonna trend more towards vertically integrated SaaS products because more and more businesses are now banking their entire software workflow on the SaaS market. And therefore having a single vertically integrated SaaS product that can do this for them is much more achievable. The other way to look at this is some companies have upwards of 10 to 20 SaaS products and they are looking to trim this down. If they can just pick three or four heavily vertically integrated SaaS products, can really trim down the amount of integrations they have, as well as the amount of costs they may have across all these different products. Key to keep in mind that a lot of SaaS products have similar pricing, so simply reducing the number of SaaS products into a simple vertically integrated piece will potentially be a saving for customers. So I think vertically integrated software as a service will become more of a trend in 2022, and I think this will continue into the years to come. All right, number three, MarTech or marketing tech. So marketing tech is not new and it has been around for quite a while, but I think now that marketing is becoming more and more and more data-driven by the day, marketing technology platforms are becoming a key area of the growing area of SaaS products. You always have to be on a marketing platform in order to get the data and the personalization that's needed to compete in today's market. If you look at a couple of points here, the first one I highlight is personalization. Today, blanket emails of catalogs is just not going to cut it with the end consumer. If you want to build a product, you have to have this marketing personalization built in. And this is where these MarTech products are really finding their niche. It's almost common practice that now, in order to play the game, you have to have personalized marketing as part of your wider company. And this is why these marketing SaaS products are really getting the buy-in in the market. I think this will continue in 2022. And where some of these products are only simply outreach programs, i.e. email platforms, will start growing into wider forms of contact for users. There are more and more touch points that users are looking to interface in today, whether that be in-app, on their phones, on their laptops, tablets, or computers, or in some of the metaverses that are happening. Marketing is to reach people in these newfound digital worlds, and these marketing tech platforms are the ones that are gonna play in that space. At the same time, migration to the cloud is still very big in the marketing space. There are still a number of on-premise marketing products that are there and being used by some of the world's largest companies. They are migrating off onto SaaS products, but I think this will start happening more and more in 2022, as well as into the future. Obviously, these will go more into a SaaS product, and therefore, if you are building a marketing product, I think that's gonna be a great area to be building in 2022. Marketing is always gonna be needed because people always need to jump more business and get their brand out there. And it's a great area to have a product in 2022. All right, the fourth trend in 2022 is gonna be platform as a service or PaaS. Again, platforms as a service have been around for quite a while, but I see this really taking off in 2022. A lot of people five or six years ago would build a lot of things from scratch whether that be the hardware or the software. These days they're looking to cut those corners and they're trying to outsource some of these things to other products, i.e. a platform as a service. A platform as a service is gonna be able to give you a shortcut to be able to take a platform that someone has already built and therefore build on top of it. Azure is a really good example of this and they have a number of platform as a service products that you can simply start up and use today without having to go into all the rim roll of setting up the hardware yourself, figuring it, putting the security around it and managing the updates. This means that your devs can concentrate on building the product and the features at hand rather than managing the hardware underneath it. And this is where I really think platforms as a service are gonna start taking off. People are gonna realize that they just don't have enough time in the day or enough staff to tackle everything they need and they need some of these things outsourced to other providers. A platform as a service packages this up very nicely. And if you are able to offer your product as this platform as a service, I think you're gonna be in a really good spot. At the same time, there's two key things that platforms as a service do. Firstly, it's scalability. And secondly, it's multi-device support. Depending which platform as a service you go to, Today, being able to scale and also hit the multiple devices that are out there can be a challenge. Again, if you're a SaaS product trying to do this, you understand how difficult this can be. And there's multiple platforms out there that can allow you to try and hit these things without actually doing the work in-house. While yes, you are paying the platform as a service to do that, they should and would be able to do this cheaper than why you are because they're doing it at scale. And this is where I think the platform as a service is really gonna succeed. And that is that there's so many SaaS players in the market racing to get that next feature or get that next client on board, that they simply just don't have enough time in the day to try and do everything. Platform as a service is gonna enable to free up these engineers, to be able to hand off those things to the platform provider, and therefore build on top of that the platform they actually need for their end users. I can see platform as a service being a big trend in 2022, and I think it will continue to play out over the next few years. Minimal and low code. Minimal and low code is essentially platforms that allow you to build on existing infrastructure with minimal or no code. Now, there's a few common players out there, and the main one that a lot of people heard of is around Zapier. Now Zapier is targeted as a no-code platform. Zapier is a product that we've come across in the past, 
and it is commonplace in a lot of products these days. What I would say is I want to talk more about low code or minimal code products that are out there on the market. Here at Flying Donkey, we are an Integramat partner, and it's one of the products that we use in this low code environment. Low code essentially is a product that has some built in integrations already, but also has the ability to add custom and low code. We're underbuilding the whole product and the whole platform from scratch on custom architecture. You can simply use and the existing integrations that Integramat already has, and you can put your spin on it with some low code sections. A simple example of this is people who reach out to us and say, look, we want to get our HubSpot data into this other product. We could obviously build an integration into HubSpot, but Integramat has already done that. But what we really want is on the other side, once that data comes out of HubSpot, we want to put that into a custom application. And that's where the logic of the low code comes in. So I'm sort of saying, this has already been built, we're not going to rebuild that, but this part hasn't, so we can really reuse that. If you're a SaaS provider, the other way to look at this is rather than building all these integrations into your own SaaS product, you may as well look at these low-code solutions to try and outsource these integrations. If you integrate with, say, Zapier or Integramat, it means you automatically get a bunch of integrations into your SaaS platform without having to build them. At the same time, those products will then maintain those integrations rather than you. Particularly with API callbacks these days, you can simply do this by allowing people to call back to an API and then get integrations to hundreds, potentially thousands of things off the bat. This will reduce your integration time and may mean that a product or a client who is looking at you, who didn't integrate into the product that they had, or that product wasn't requested by enough people, can now look at your product because you integrate via Integramat or Zapier into the product thereafter. I think this is going to be a really big trend in 2022, where they're going to make their SaaS product integrate with more products, and they're simply not going to have the firepower or dev resource to be able to do this. Integramat and Zapier make this possible with a simple integration. They also have these low-code sections where if the integration isn't perfect in Zapier or Integramat, you can actually just code up the small amount of missing code to make the connection work. Yes, there are some costs to these platforms, but they are very reasonably priced, particularly when comparing to a full custom integration. And again, when a client approaches you and wants you to integrate with five or six products, if you've got one or two and you've got four you have to build, potentially palming them off to a Zapier or an Integramat is gonna be really, really handy. I think it's gonna be a really big trend as people start focusing on their core products and their core features and the integrations will become secondary. You essentially need those integrations to play in the market, but you simply just don't have the time to develop them. And that's why I think low or minimal code is gonna be really popular. All right, so that summarizes my five trends in 2022 and what I think is gonna be big in this year. There's plenty more out there in the technology world and there's plenty more coming in the future. SaaS is an exciting place to be and there's just so much going on and so much to build that you simply can't get to it all yourself. Here at Flying Donkey, we've helped numerous SaaS products reach market fit as well as delivered roadmaps in an accelerated fashion. If you're looking to hit 2022 with a running start, I want some help from us on how to deliver that. Feel free to reach out and get in touch.